Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. This is the start of a brand new tutorial series in which we're going to create a full stack application with Python Django as the backend and React.js as the front end. Over the course of this tutorial, we'll be focusing on five activities. The first one and also the focus of this video is going to be setting up our Python backend. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can create the React.js front end and make sure that the backend and the front end can communicate with each other. Um, and in the following videos, we will focus on page navigation with React Router, creating a navbar with material UI components. And I will show you a basic example of how you can create, read, update, and delete records using the database. To successfully set up our Python Django backend, we're going to go through six steps. We're going to start by creating a virtual environment, which tracks all of the packages that we install during our project. Next up, we're going to install some of the packages such as uh, Django, but also NPM and Django REST framework, which we're going to be needing uh, during our development. Um, and we're going to create our Django project and our app from the command line. When our project and app are successfully created, we're going to be changing our settings.py file. We're going to include our URLs and also migrate our database. And at the end, we're going to check whether everything works the way that we expect. Now, what do you need to follow along with this tutorial series? Well, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code for this project. Uh, in addition, it will be good if you already have some knowledge on Python Django and understand what React.js is. I will explain as much as possible, but it's good to at least have a limited understanding of these two technologies. And now let's get started with setting up our Python backend. So we are now in our Visual Studio Code and all I've done so far is create a folder on my local desktop and I've opened it inside Visual Studio Code. So this is all there is. One of the first things that I want to do is create two subfolders inside of this Django React Tutorial folder. And I'm going to create one folder called Backend and then I'm going to create another folder called Frontend because I want to split up the development of my backend code with Python Django and my frontend code with React.js. Um, in this video, we are going to set up our Python backend. So I'm only going to focus on the backend folder for now. And I'm going to open a new terminal and this will open it on the Django React tutorial folder. And one of the first things that I'll do is I'll cd into my backend folder because that is where we want to do the work. Inside of this backend folder, the first thing that I want to do is create a virtual environment because a virtual environment can store versions of packages and this makes sure that that is always tracked during development. Um, to create a virtual environment, we first need to install something called virtual env. So on the bottom in the terminal, I'm going to type in Python dash M and then pip install virtual env. And I have already done this on my computer, so you will see that the requirement is already satisfied. Um, but if you've not done it before, please do that right now. All right, so you can see that it's done. So we're now gonna go ahead and create our virtual environment. And you can do that by typing Python dash M and then virtual env and then the name of your virtual environment. Now I'm just going to call it vent, but you can call it whatever you want. All right, and it took some time and now you can see that inside of my backend folder, I have another folder called v vnv with my virtual environment uh, and that includes a bunch of scripts and also a git ignore file uh, that we, uh, we're not really going to use, but now it is there. And to use my virtual environment, um, I need to actually activate it. So in my terminal, I'm going to say vanv slash scripts slash activate. And this is going to activate my virtual environment inside of my project. And you can also see on the front now of my terminal that it's activated here and that I'm working inside of this environment. And this will now track all of the packages that I'm installing, which is going to be very nice for development. The next step we need to take is installing some packages for our development. Uh, and this is of course a Python Django project. So the first thing that I'm going to do is install Django. So I'm going to do Python dash M and then pip install Django. And because we're going to be working with JavaScript, we also are going to need Node.js and NPM. 
so I'm on the Node.js website, nodejs.org, uh, which will also be in the description of this video. And I'm going to download the latest recommended version for most users. Um, and I'm just going to download that so I can uh, use npm in my project. Okay, so I've gone through the Node.js setup wizard and I've now finished the download of Node.js. Um, and this means that we can use it to install the package called npm. So to do that, I'm going to state npm install dash g npm. The last thing that we're going to install is Django REST framework. And Django REST framework is the API framework from Django. And this is going to allow us to uh, yeah, put in requests for, for getting information and posting information uh, to our database between the front end and the back end. So we're gonna go back to our code and I'm going to say pip install. And then it is just Django REST framework. And it again took some time, but the install of Django REST framework is now complete. And this is all that we need to install for now. Um, the next step, the third one of this tutorial is to create a Django project. And to do that, I'm going to use Django admin um, and I'm going to state Django admin start project. And I'm just going to call this uh, CRUD. And now inside of my backend folder, you will see that we have a new folder called CRUD with in there also a new folder called CRUD. And this will also have my settings.py file. It will have yeah, all the basics for, for my application. Now what you will see here is that it's a layered approach. So I have a folder called CRUD and then underneath there, another folder called CRUD. Uh, but I don't want it. I want it to be all on the same level because I think this is a little bit confusing. So what I'm going to do is on the top level of CRUD, I'm going to rename it to CRUD2. And I'm going to remove CRUD and manage it by and put those on the highest level here. I'm going to put them inside of backends or on the same level. And now I'm going to remove CRUD2. And this makes sure that everything in my project is on the same level. And I just think that's a lot, uh, lot better. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new app uh, because I want to split my APIs into different categories. Uh, that's something you typically do within your Django project. So in here, I'm going to state Django admin and I'm going to say start app API. So this is where I will build all of the APIs and just to keep it split. You can now see that it comes to the same level as CRUD right here, which is quite nice for us. And that is the third step completed. Next, we need to make some changes to our settings.py file. So I need to go into CRUD and then into settings.py. And in here, I'm just going to delete the top part because I'm not going to need that. I'm going to make a few changes. Now the first one is under install apps. And there we need to first up add REST framework because we will be using that over the course of the next tutorials. And it's important to list that down here. And the second thing that we will do is we will also put in our um, API module right there, because it also needs to be included. And for now, it is all that we need to add to our settings to file. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that the URLs that we create in API um, yeah, come through to our CRUD module. So inside of API, I'm going to add a new file called urls.py. And in there, I'm going to first state from django.urls import path. And I'm going to create the URL, URL patterns. And in there, I'm going to define my first path, which is just going to go to home. And I'm also going to call that home. And for this to work, because currently we do not have a view called home, just for illustration purposes, I'm going to say from the views import all. And inside of my views, I'm going to create a very basic view that's just going to state some text. So we can actually 
test whether everything is working the way that we expect. Um, so I'm just going to go and say from django.http, we're going to import HTTP response. And now we're going to create a very basic home view that will just put some text uh, on our home page. Um, so let's define home. Do that by saying request. And then inside of my view, I'm going to return the HTTP response. And in that response, we will state this is the home page. And this will be enough to display this text on the home page in combination with the URL that we have right here. So we're also going to save our URLs at by file. Uh, and now we need to make sure that these URLs from our API are actually included into my main project here. And to do that, we're going to go to the URLs that by file inside of CRUD. And again, I'm going to just delete all of this text on the top. And next to Django URLs import path, we're also going to import include. And then underneath the uh, admin URL, we're going to import a path. And under the view name, we're going to state that we want to include the API URLs. So this will look into the URLs of my API and include everything that is on here. Uh, in this case, that is just my basic home view. The last step is migrating our models and creating our database. And we can do this from our command line with two simple commands. First being python manage.py make migrations. And then we're going to do python manage.py migrate. And you can see that it lists down all of the default tables that it's going to uh, yeah, generate um, for migration. And you will also see that we now have a db.sqlite database attached to our project. And that was the last step. So let's see whether this is all working the way that we expect now. And we're going to start our server by stating python manage.py run server. And our server is now up and running. And if I open it, you will see that we are now on our home page and it displays the text, this is the home page. So this at least confirms that our URLs are successfully going to our main project and that the text is visible. And this is actually all that we need to do for the first tutorial series. So we've already uh, yeah, created our basic setup for our backend and we've initiated our database. In the next video, we will continue and we are going to make sure that uh, we configure our React.js project inside of our front end. And we're also going to make sure that the back end and the front end can communicate with each other. In the videos after, I'm going to show you how you can go from page to page in your front end using React Router. We're going to create a nice navigation menu uh, with items for Material UI. And I'm also going to show you a very basic uh, CRUD example, which displays how we can create, read, update, and delete records. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Uh, and please subscribe if you like the content. Bye-bye.